Hey everybody, we're here today talking about the system sensor duct detector. It's one of the most widely used duct detectors that we come across. So I just wanted to go over a few things and some stuff that confuses some people and see if we can help somebody out. So let's get to it. So right here we have an auxiliary A contact. So we have a common, normally closed, and normally open. And then we also have an auxiliary B contact that is the same. So we have a common, normally closed, and normally open. So the different thing about this smoke detector is this one, the SUP, which is a supervisory contact, which means that this is looking for any problems with the smoke detector and will respond accordingly. So this contact is different when it is powered to when it is de-energized. So we will go over that here in a second. And then we have the alarm contact which closes when the detector goes into an alarm. And usually this is wired to a fire panel and then the fire panel will go into alarm and set off horns and strobes and, and things like that. So down here we have the 1 and 2 right here which is 24 volts AC and 24 volts DC. So this is where you would run your power to to power this detector. Um, some of these detectors, if you can see right here, will, can run off 120 volts AC, but this detector will cannot, not this uh, model. So they have different models. They'll have a transformer here um, and some lugs to land some wires for that. So you can run it off 120 volts AC or 24 volts AC or DC in 24 volts. So these other contacts here are for accessories and we have an accessory that we're going to wire up and it's a test station, a key pad test station. It's a horn and a strobe all in one and we will uh, show how to wire that up and which ones to land it on. All these other contacts here are just different test stations and different accessories that you can wire up to this detector. So right down here we have sensor 1 and sensor 2 which you can put two different sensors on this. One usually in the return duct and then one usually in the supply duct. So sensor 1 which we only have one sensor on this particular one so we'll wire this up and it has a tamper su switch which is yellow yellow that's in the sensor itself and we'll go over that here short here in a little while and explain that and then we have red and black which is our power that powers the sensor and then the same thing on uh, sensor 2 so and then we also right here if you can see these we have some dip switches here that we can change so we can change how long it takes for the tamper delay and then we can either go seven minutes or zero minutes depending on how you want to do it and then we can flip this next dip switch and tell it if it has one or two sensors so this one's going to be down because it has only one sensor. And then off on for trouble shutdown. So you can shut your piece of equipment down if this duct detector goes into a trouble code. 
which meaning that we probably have a dirty sensor or something is wrong with our sensor and stuff like that so what I'm gonna do now is wire this thing up and go over what the wires are and what they're gonna do and so let's get it wired up and we'll go from there so the first thing we'll wire up is our sensor so we have the wires here so we're laying yellow on yellow and both yellows and then we'll go from there so usually these come already hooked up but you can run a remote wire so that your sensor is remote from the module or you can take it and attach them both together like we have right here and run it that way also so get this wired up and then we'll wire up the panel for this the power for this Alright, so these are our power wires and our shutdown wire. So, the gray wire, which is your common, is already marked with a number 2. So that goes under number 2. And then our 24 volts is marked with number 1, which is our red, and it goes to number 1. So then our yellow, which is our common, we'll do auxiliary A, and then that'll go to common. Then we'll go there. And then our blue is 15, which is normally closed. And then our white is 17, which is normally open. <clears throat> so the difference between these and what we want it to do is if you had a circuit board that was looking for power from the detector when it goes into alarm, then you would wire your white, which is normally open, to your circuit board. So when this detector goes into alarm, it will close the normally open and send power to white to your board. And your board will recognize that as a, a fire alarm or a smoke detection. So if we were running it taking our wire from our transformer to common and then back out to our unit to feed 24 volts to our unit then we would use our blue which is 15 which is normally closed so that when this detector is in a normal state, it will feed power to all of our components on the on our piece of equipment so that it will run. Now what happens is when this thing goes into an alarm, the normally closed opens and then it breaks power from the blue wire and then it shuts off power to our equipment. And then that will stop the equipment in a fire alarm state. <clears throat> so, um, 
auxiliary B, you can use that to do different things also. Depending on what you want to do, it works the same as auxiliary A. So the difference is our supervisory contactor, which is our SUP, as we said earlier. So <clears throat> what happens is, in the state that it's in now, it is... This is our common, this is our normally open, and this is normally closed. This is only this way when the detector is de-energized. When we energize the detector, meaning when we give power to the detector, these contacts change. So normally open will be normally closed, and normally closed will be normally open. And we can test that here in a second. So <clears throat> the reason is, is because what happens is that the fire panel company will come in and put a resistor between normally open and the common on the alarm. And then they'll jump from normally open to common just with a jumper and what they're effectively doing is they are reading in a, a resistance at the fire panel and that tells the fire panel that this detector is running fine. So the reason that they change the normally open to close when this detector has power is so that if for some reason the te detector loses power then this normally open contact which was closed when the detector had power will open back up and tell the fire panel that there is a problem and the fire panel will go into trouble and that's the reason that they change these contacts when the detector is powered so a lot of people make the mistake of what these why these do this and that that is the reason it's so that the fire panel company and everything knows that this detector has power and they can monitor that so we'll do some tests and then we can see um, what we're looking at so what we'll do we'll test this supervisory uh, contact so right now normally closed is closed and we're reading 3.3 .3 ohms there and common to normally open is ol which is open line and this detector has no power you can tell because we don't have a status light here so when we give this detector power these contacts are going to change only on the supervisory contact so let's give it power and see what we can test all right so the detector has power it's going to flash and we will check those contacts again so actually right now we can check those contacts and right now normally closed and common is reading ol which is open line and then normally open is closed and right now it's reading point one which is telling us that that contact is closed so that is what the supervisory is for just to let the fire panel company know or whatever monitoring company um, <clears throat> is monitoring the detector itself no, that lets them know that this detector has power right here so um, we can effectively tell the fire company if there is a trouble, meaning 
sometimes things happen to these sensors. Um, and then if the detector itself loses power, it will tell the fire panel company that something is wrong with the detector. So let's go over a couple other things and we will look a little further into the sensor itself and then talk about that. Alright, we just simulated a trouble on this duct detector. You can tell because the light is amber on here now. So that's telling me we're in some sort of trouble. So what happens in that case is when we do that, now are normally closed, is closed again because we're reading some ohms through that and now our normally open is open again which is reading open line and again the reason they do that is so that the fire panel company can tell or whatever monitoring system that this is using can tell that there is something going on and not right with the smoke detector so that it can be fixed so that it will operate properly. This is the sensor here and this is the sensor compartment. So this and this is where the airflow comes from. You will have a thing called a sampling tube which is a rod with some holes in it and then there's a little plastic piece that is kind of short and then what happens is the air will blow through and it causes a negative pressure in here and it pulls it across the sensor so without the cover which the cover looks like this and it's got a seal around it right here and then when this is on tight it seals so that it can have that pressure difference and cause a flow across it and then any smoke or whatever runs through this head and there's two sensing eyes in there and once they get covered with smoke then it will tell when it needs to go into an alarm. So this here is your tamper switch. It's a little switch you can push in right there. And that tells you and makes sure that the cover is on properly. Because without the cover on properly, it cannot sense the smoke properly. So that is the reason we will go into a trouble like it is now, which you can kind of see there with the amber light. And then you can tell our detector head's running fine and operating fine because that is flashing green also. So this here is our power wires to our detector. So, just put this cover back on. There, we got our amber light to go out. Now it's back green. So now we can check our supervisory contact again and make sure that it is going to work. Camera back down. So now, <clears throat> that the trouble is gone so now our normally clo closed is opened again it's a reading open line and now our normally open is closed again reading point one ohms and that will tell us and the fire company 
that our detector is operating properly and how it is supposed to. So next we will um, look at our horn and strobe keypad and we'll wire that in and explain where to wire that and how that works and what that is. It's right there. So we'll get some wire in that and then explain on how to wire that up. And it's a good thing to use when the for inspection so when you ha need a horn and a strobe in a space you can wire the keypad up and then you'll have both so that you can go down and actually reset the detector if you need to or test it inside the space if that is required and it just makes it easier because it's all in one Okay, so we're going to wire our horn and strobe up. So what's going to happen is red is going to be our auxiliary out plus, which is 7. And then our blue is going to be auxiliary out negative, which is number six. And then our green and yellow are going to go to ACC. So we wired up green to ACC plus. And then we put yellow on ACC negative. So now all that is hooked up. And then we have it wired up right there that way. So let's put the power back on it and test it. All right, so we got the power back on. We'll wait for this to... Go into green and stop flashing. That's like a little startup thing that the smoke detector does. So if we look on our test station, you can see that we have a green light. So basically, since we don't have a fire panel, that test station is what is monitoring the smoke detector. So if we make this thing go into a trouble again, and I will show you what we can do. There, it went into trouble. You can tell by the amber light. So if we Put the camera over here there's our test station it has an amber light on it so that is telling us in our remote station which this test station right here this whole station is going to be in the store somewhere in the store 
and if the fire marshal comes in and sees this he'll he'll say something if the manager of the store or wherever it is notices this they can call in a service call and have somebody come out and check their duck detector so this came with a key which I'll show you real quick what uh what the key does so the key slides right in there so we can turn it this way for sensor one and we can reset it with this button if we had a second sensor and we wanted to reset it or test it we could turn it to sensor two so we'll get this back out of trouble and back on and then what we're going to do is test it and show what happens when we go into test into alarm mode sorry okay guys we got it out of trouble we can go ahead and test this thing and we'll show the alarm contacts that are closed and then we'll show the test station and it's going to show a red LED on there which is going to signify an alarm and the duct detector is going to have a red LED right in the same place that flashes green and that's going to signify an alarm so let's get this thing in alarm and test but first let's test the alarm contacts to normally open so we will test that let's see so right now it's reading open line ol so we know the alarm contact is open which is supposed to because it's a normally open contact so let's push and hold the test reset button it's going to be a little loud guys sorry so let's test this so now we're reading 0.1 ohms, which is telling me that that's closed. The alarm has a red alarm on it. The sensor has a red alarm. And then we got a red alarm LED and our strobe is flashing. And you can hear the alarm going off. The horn. So... That is basically what this thing does. So we'll get that off. And then that is how you wire up a duct detector. And in a different video, we will hook up a few things. And then we will show that the duct detector shuts off shuts everything down and how we kind of wire that up to make that happen so that's the video for this time if you guys have any comments or things that other things that you may want to know about a duck detector please leave a comment down below and keep it safe and keep it hvacking <laughs>